Some of the local high school boys dropped by a couple months back and asked if they could hunt the ducks on our pond down here. And uh, they're very well-mannered and, and thoughtful young gentlemen. So I told them, you bet, have at it. They've been down here a few times, had some success. They came down this morning and had a great deal of success. They limited out and um, I asked them, what, are they, what do you do with these ducks? And they said, oh, we just eat the breasts. And so I said, why don't you bring them back to me after you get the breasts out and I'll show you some uh, other things you can do with these that will uh, get a little more utility out of them and, and provide some excellent food. So I'm gonna go through and break these ducks down and I'm after legs, livers, and hearts. So we'll take the legs and we'll do a confit and we'll take the organ meat and make a pate and that way we can get a little more yield out of this uh, beautiful bounty from our land here. So let's get into them. But before we get to those mallards, let me show you how I usually take care of a duck. This poor fella here is an older drake from a laying flock that some friends had and he's been getting around the yard on a wing, a bill, and one flipper because he's got a leg injury. So they uh, asked me if I could take care of it for him. They didn't have the heart, so. I'll try to calm him down here and put him at ease and kind of telepathically let him know what I intend to uh, do to end his suffering and hope that he has a good journey. I don't know if he can understand me, but it sure feels better to do it that way. And then here I wait for consent. And there we go. I also think it's a good idea when you're slaughtering animals like this to say a little prayer for their life, and in this case for the folks who owned them as well. And then that's just that throat slit. Then scald them in 145 degree water to loosen the feathers and pluck them out. And all those little downy feathers will come out easier after he's chilled down, but first we'll gut him. Separating the crop from the neck and the breast. Normally, if I was raising this duck for meat, he would have been deprived of food for 24 hours, but because this guy's got a full crop here, we'll just get the trachea and the esophagus, and we'll cut that with the crop free from the lower portions of the digestive tract here. And then coming in from below, we can pull that esophagus through, like so. And scoop all the rest of the intestines out. And I'm going to, of course, save the liver off of this guy. And get the heart as well. And after chilling for 24 hours, all those little feathers came off, and we'll just part this bird out to get the good edible meat sections. And this older drake is, of course, going to be tougher than a young meat bird. He's been running a laying flock, but basically break it down like any other poultry, coming around the leg and to that hip joint, and then we'll pop that hip joint like so, and then separate the rest of that from the body and get the other one and the breasts basically just coming along the sternum here and then along the wishbone and then it's basically just a matter of separating the breast meat from the ribs then we'll take that carcass and roast it off if you're doing it in an oven about 425 for 45 minutes or so gather up some herbs and vegetables from the garden to make a stock. A little red wine in there as well. In goes our roasted carcass. Salt, pepper, make the stock, strain it out. Well, now we have a braising liquid. So we'll take the legs and season them up with salt and pepper. And then I've got some lard simmering in a Dutch oven. We'll sear these off, brown the skin in the meat side and then add some liquid to them and braise them for about six hours or so at about 250. Broth. Moving on to the breasts. So these 
I've scored the skin. We're going into a dry, hot cast iron just to brown the skin off. This guy didn't have a whole lot of fat on him when you're cooking a, a meat breed. They tend to have a bit of fat on the back, which is helpful, renders out. So yeah, just flip these and 350 for about 15 minutes or so gets you to about medium well, which is how I like it. And then our braised legs are nice and tender, and that's my usual approach. But back to these mallards. So, because they still have the feathers on, this can be a bit of a fidgety process, but we'll take the flippers off and get to separating the skin from those thighs. And mostly just pulling and working that leg free. And once we get her out of there, we'll try to clean it of feathers. Check it for birdshot as well. You can see the entrance wounds and usually find the shot, get them out of there pretty well. So, pick all the feathers off, and we have one of 24 legs. And we'll go in after the heart and liver. Same method as usual, that horizontal slit. Very careful not to pierce the intestines and then out comes all the creamy filling and we'll get that liver. There's the heart that came out with all of that. And then the liver's there next to that gizzard. Watch out for the gallbladder here. And then pinch the top of that and pull the liver away like so. I'm also going to come in here and get these blue wing feathers because I think they'd make excellent fletching for arrows. So we'll get a few of these just to have around. It's a very unusual color, so easy to identify your arrows in the woods. So we have our organ meat and our legs and those beautiful feathers. Let's make some pate. Hearts and livers, butter, bacon, cream, and some various herbs and spices. First we'll brown the bacon in the butter. And then we'll add the organ meat. There's some flexibility in these ratios. We'll brown these off. And once they're browned on the outside, we can add the spice mix. Get that stirred in there. And then about a shot of brandy. About like so. I would probably double the amount of cream that I'm using here. That's about six ounces, so maybe 12 ounces, something like that. And then had some porcini mushrooms laying around, so they went in there too. Once it reduces down to a cream sauce consistency like this, put her in the blender, get everything nice and smooth, and then because this is a wild bird and there may be bird shot in there, we'll run it through the food mill with a fine plate and then put it into our terrine, cover it with plastic. We ended up taking this one to a New Year's Day party where my brother Daniel made zampone. He skinned out these trotters and made a sausage out of the leg and stuffed them, which was excellent and a good compliment to that mallard pate. So moving on to this confit, this uh, spice mix, uh, salt, rosemary, sage, and pepper. Could have used some juniper berries as well, but it turned out pretty good anyway. So we're going to heavily salt both sides of these and let them sit for 72 hours. This is after the cure, and you can see the condensation on the sheet pan from all the moisture that's been pulled out of these legs over that three-day period. I didn't have duck fat, so I'm just using butter which works out just fine as well, but if you have domestic meat birds, you can render all the fat down and save it for this. Just enough to pretty much cover those legs, and then we're gonna slow cook these on the wood stove for about eight hours or so. Just keeping it rolling as usual to heat the house, and that's about halfway done there. And I stir them around, flip them over every once in a while. And when they do this, they're done. So all of the connective tissue has dissolved. 
this is an incredibly tasty snack. You can can this and take it on the trail, put it in a terrain, serve it with crackers, quite delicious. So basically go through and uh, strip all the meat off the bones on all these legs and you will have some of the best eating you've had in your life. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it helps. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.